Hey what's going on YouTube, welcome back. Looks like Samsung is on a roll these days because the One UI 2.5 update is now available for the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And this update is awesome because after this update the Note 10 Plus pretty much feels like the Note 20 series. So this update brings a lot of new features from the new flagship the Note 20 Ultra to the last generation Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And in this video I'm gonna show you about 25 features that are new with this update. Alright so let us start with the wireless Samsung DeX. So the way this works is actually pretty simple. You'll need a smart TV with Miracast wireless streaming support. And I'm gonna show this to you on an old 2016 LG smart TV. All right, so grab your Note 10 Plus, drop down the notification panel, and then locate Dex, tap on it, and over here you will see your TV's name, if it is supported. And just tap on the name of the TV, and that is pretty much all there is to it. And bam, we have Samsung Dex running completely wirelessly on our smart TV. And one of the best part is that the phone is completely usable when you are using Samsung DeX. And one of the most interesting things about this wireless DeX functionality is that you can plug in a keyboard and a mouse on your TV and use that as input devices. You don't even need to touch the phone. So the thing is the receiver of the keyboard and the mouse are actually plugged in into the USB ports of the TV. Also what I have noticed is that the keyboard does not always work on LG TVs so what you can do is plug in the keyboards receiver into the phone using a USB type C to type A adapter and then you will be able to use a physical keyboard to type stuff while you are using the wireless DeX functionality and this wireless DeX functionality pretty much transforms your smart TV into a desktop PC because you kind of get Windows like experience well, sort of. You've got icons on your desktop and whenever you launch an app, it opens up in a little window just like it would on a Windows PC. And the thing is, you can launch multiple apps and they will all open up in a window. And you can launch any app that is installed on your phone and you will see it on your TV completely wirelessly. And personally, I really like the multitasking experience on Samsung DeX. For a phone to do this completely wirelessly, it's amazing and you can do pretty much anything that standard Samsung DeX can like give presentations, create documents or show your photos and videos to a friend of yours. And fortunately the video playback is also quite smooth. I did not notice any frame drop or any lags while the video was playing back. So that's a huge plus point if you want to show videos on a big screen. And if you don't have a keyboard or a mouse, you can use the phone as a touchpad. But nothing beats a keyboard and a mouse. Now if you don't have a dedicated keyboard to plug in into your TV, what you can do is enable the on-screen keyboard from Samsung DeX settings. And this will provide an on-screen keyboard that you will be able to use to send text messages. But to be honest, just get a wireless keyboard and plug the receiver into your TV. It is a lot easier to type on an actual physical keyboard. And if you have an LG TV that comes with one of these magic remotes, you can actually use the magic remote to control Samsung DeX. The magic remote itself doubles up as a mouse. Also, just so you know, the sound actually plays back on the TV speaker, not on the phone. So if you happen to play music, it will play back through the TV speaker. So here's a fun fact. If you have a home theater system hooked up to your TV, whenever you play music or watch a video, the sound will actually play back through the home theater. This is not running through Bluetooth. This is running through the Samsung DeX feature because my home theater doesn't even have Bluetooth. So this will allow you to enjoy your music on big speakers. As for gaming, I could not get the keyboard to work even though it is plugged in into the TV. The controls just does not work. By the way, this is dead trigger too. It might work in some games, but I've checked out the settings, there is no way the game is accepting the keyboard input. With mouse, it does work but it's very very tedious to play games with a mouse. Maybe if you play chess or something it's okay but I think wireless decks isn't really meant for gaming. This is more of a productivity too. Told you guys, wireless Samsung decks on TV is awesome. Alright, so moving on to the next feature live captions. So press on the volume button and expand this menu by pressing that and turn on live caption. So what does live caption do? 
live captions will automatically generate subtitles or captions whenever you play back a video or an audio which contains speech. So let me just go to the gallery and play a video and you guys will see the phone will generate captions. So if you've got a little bit of music. Hi, welcome back everybody. So it's been a few days since I have been using the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and I thought I'd make a video and tell you guys how I feel about this phone. And before we begin, it goes without saying, if you enjoy watching my content, make sure to so live captions is amazing. Even though the speakers are muted, I can actually understand what the other person is saying in the video or in the audio because we have captions at the bottom of the screen. And live captions work system wide. So if I play a video with speech on Instagram, you guys will see live captions is generating captions. Amazing. Even with the speakers muted, you can understand what Linus is saying. Now let us move on to the camera and let's go to pro video mode because pro video mode has seen a major upgrade. So now when you start recording, you can now change the ISO and the shutter speed while the video recording is going on. This was not possible before. These two settings would get disabled as soon as you start recording. Now they don't. So videographers are absolutely going to love this feature. Next up, Samsung has added a histogram. Tap on this to open up the histogram and the histogram tells you if your video is being clipped so you see that peak that is most likely due to this little reflection so you see that goes away once i put my hand over there next you can probably see the audio meter is right over here i love the audio meter i use audio meter on my main camera all the time it kind of lets me know how the audio levels are let us go to the camera settings and you guys will see a new menu here which says pro video size so for pro video you can select a different resolution and a different resolution for the regular video mode these two have been separated out and also you get the new 21 is to 9 aspect ratio so that will give you a slightly wider view so you kind of get that cinematic aspect ratio also, in addition to 21 is to 9 aspect ratio, you also get the option of recording videos at 24 FPS. So that will further enhance the cinematic effect. Now, I usually don't recommend recording videos at 24 FPS because that will give the video a choppy look. 24 FPS is for a very specific purpose if you are recording a video to get that cinematic effect on purpose. Also, just so you know, this 24 FPS option and the 21 is to 9 aspect ratio is only available in the pro video size. You will not find this aspect ratio in the regular video mode. And you can also change the aspect ratio by pressing this icon. Also, in the pro video mode, you can change the way the internal microphone of the phone captures sound while you are recording a video. So if we swipe here, you can see this little microphone icon tap on this and you get three options so let me start recording and let me give you guys a demo so the first option is omnidirectional captures sound equally from all directions this is the front best for capturing sounds coming towards the front of the phone so right now i'm sitting in the front of the phone so this is the best if i'm speaking looking into the screen next up we have the rear best for capturing sounds coming towards the back of the phone so this is the best if you want to capture the sounds that are coming from the back of the phone and over here you can adjust the sound level of the internal microphone but hold on guys that is not all now for this update you can also use a high quality usb microphone and you can also use the microphone which is on your bluetooth headset let me show you how it works okay so i have plugged in the blue snowball usb condenser microphone into the note 10 plus and the way i have plugged this thing in is through a usb type c to type a adapter these are pretty cheap and easily available on amazon so now in the pro video mode if i go to the microphone icon i can now use the usb microphone as my audio source so let me give you guys a demo this is the audio that is coming in from the phone's internal microphone and now I will stop this and select the USB mic. And this is the audio that is coming in from the USB microphone. You can probably tell the difference is huge. The Snowball USB condenser microphone does provide a much, much higher quality audio. Amazing feature. Love it. Also, in addition to the USB microphones, now you can use the microphone which is on your Bluetooth headset. So I have connected my Sony Bluetooth headset to the phone and now I'll be able to use the Bluetooth option. 
record sound through your Bluetooth mic or headset. So now the phone is picking up sound from this microphone. Check this out. See how that audio meter changes and if I select it to internal microphone, so that does not change. So the phone is in fact picking up sound coming from the headphones. Let me give you guys a demo. So first off, this is the sound that is coming in from the internal microphone of the phone. And this is the sound that the phone is capturing through my Bluetooth headset. I'm actually wearing the Bluetooth headset right now. So I can see this feature coming in very, very handy if someone is recording me from a distance. I don't have to scream in order for the phone to capture the sound. I can just wear my Bluetooth headset, select this option and not have to worry if the phone is able to capture my sound or not. With this update, when you select the motion photo option, the motion photo option is right over here the phone will record a bit of audio. So if you don't know what motion photo is, motion photo captures a bit of video right before you press the camera shutter button. The photo appears as a still, but it is actually a little video. So now the phone How's it going, guys? records audio in the motion photo. Previously it did not, so here's a motion photo that I recorded before the update. No sound in the video. So that's a useful feature because the thing is you can save the motion photo as a video. So if I tap on this, it will actually save the motion photo as a regular video. How's it going guys? So that's a useful change. Also the single take mode has been updated. Now you have a timer that you can select for how long you want the single take to be. And single take is one of the most awesome features. It will record a video, then it will extract photos. It will automatically apply filters, create boomerang video, fast forward video, and all sorts of cool stuff. The way the edge panel looks and feels has also been updated. So this is how the new edge panel looks like. So on the top, you have the most recently accessed applications. And on the bottom here, these are the applications that I have added to the edge panel. Now, what I really like about this new edge panel is that you can add split screen favorites. So let's launch two apps in split screen view. So for example, I'm going to open up WhatsApp and Chrome in split screen view and we are going to add them as favorites. So tap and open up in split screen mode, tap on this button to switch their location. And now if I tap over here, you'll see this new icon. This is the way that you can add split screen apps as a favorite on the edge panel. And I can do the same for pretty much any app I want. So we will do that for gallery and the play store tap add favorites. So now if I open up the edge panel and if I scroll down, you'll see the favorite split screen apps have been added over here. And when I tap on these, these two applications will always open up in the split screen mode view. So that's how you add your favorite split screen apps to the edge panel. And if I tap this, gallery and play store will open up in split screen mode view. Another change this update brings is that now you can display your Bitmoji on the always on display. So if you have used Snapchat in the past, you probably know what Bitmoji is. So first off, you will need to update the Bitmoji application on the phone. Go to that first and then drop down the notification panel and we will go to the always on display settings. Then tap on clock style and then press on always on display. First, you will need to make sure always on display is turned on. So now from over here, go to the animated clock where you are able to set a GIF and then press on Bitmoji. And this will let you pick a Bitmoji from this list. I find this feature really nice. So this kind of lets me customize my phone even further and I will definitely display my Bitmoji on the always on display. The gallery also gives you a live preview of the videos in the thumbnail. So as you can see, the videos are playing back in the thumbnail. So that's a useful feature. I like that. The Samsung Notes application has also seen a substantial upgrade. By the way, I highly recommend that you add the Samsung Notes widget to your home screen. This will let you quickly create notes right from your home screen. So we will launch the Samsung Notes app. now. All your previous notes will need to be converted into the new format because once you update, all of these will become old format notes. So if I tap on one of them, you can see I cannot actually edit this. I will need to convert this to the new version so that I can edit. And that is pretty much it. That's how you convert the old note into the new version. And one thing I really love about these new Samsung notes is that you can now highlight stuff on the screen. Previously, you could not highlight text so now you can let's select a different pen or highlighter. See, that's how you can highlight and you can also annotate stuff. 
So I've selected the red pen, I can now underline my stuff, which you could not do before. And also now you will be able to add notes to different folders so that they are easier to organize. So if I tap on these three dots, you can see a new option here which says folders and you can tap on manage folder to add a new folder to them. So I have created a new folder and I can long press, move this to the social folder. That's it, this note has been moved into the social folder. A very useful tool if you wanna organize your notes properly. Now Samsung Notes can also import PDF files. So you can see the PDF button, tap on this and just select a PDF from your storage. So I have imported this PDF into Samsung Notes. It's just a data sheet for some capacitor. And the best part is you can actually annotate. So if I wanna highlight something or draw something, I can do that in the PDF and also select a highlighter and highlight stuff. If I wanna highlight some important part, I can also do that. And the best part is this will also let you sign a PDF. And once you are done, you can now go ahead and save this as a file or share this through email. Very, very powerful tool. There is also a dedicated reading mode. So if you tap on this icon, this will disable all the editing. And now I can use the S Pen to scroll through the notes. Let's create a new note and let me show you some more interesting stuff. If I tap on these three dots, I can now change the page template. So from over here, you can select a different template or you can pick one from your gallery. I kind of like this one because that kind of makes the page look like a notebook. You can also change the background color. Tap on these three dots and then select background color. And if you pick a yellow color, that kind of makes it look like a notepad. So this is kind of nice. You get plenty of background colors to choose from. You also have a new option called finger drawing. Now, here's the thing. I have selected the highlighter option and I can highlight using the S Pen. But what if I wanna highlight using my finger? Well, tap on these three dots and select finger drawing on, and now you will be able to highlight using your finger. So I guess that is pretty much all there is to it for this update. Now there are things that didn't work. For example, the Wi-Fi quality information on nearby Wi-Fi routers can be measured. This actually did not work. So the phone does not show very fast, fast, normal or slow. Maybe they will fix it in the future update. Also the request password button does not work. And also I could not find this feature in the Samsung keyboard where it allows you to search the YouTube videos. So that YouTube option should be somewhere over here, but I could not find it. Uh, doesn't really matter because I don't use Samsung keyboard. I do prefer my own Swift key keyboard. This is much better. So I guess that is pretty much all there is to it for this update. Thank you for watching this video and do let me know what you feel about this update. I think this is a step in the right direction because it kind of makes my Note 10 Plus feels like the Note 20. So thank you guys for watching. Do stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.